page at you. Absolutely. Uh, and I spoke with Pramawat yesterday, and he said he was looking forward to playing against Tord. He said he wants this matchup. Uh, he actually thinks he has a good matchup against Tord's deck, <laughs> and uh, he's ready to go. Pramawat does not back down from a challenge. Uh, he loves the competition. He wants everybody to know that he's the best, and what better way to prove it than by knocking off probably the number one player in the world right now. I mean, you can go either way, Pramawat or Tord, but back-to-back uh, -back international championships is hard to argue with. It's very hard to argue with. If we look at the number of match points, currently the number one seed is Philip Schultz, who we just saw winning on stream. He's at 25. Michael Pramawat and Tord Reklev are both very close behind with 23. I should also mention that Frank Persick also has 25 match points. So, quite frankly, we've got some very, very good players here. 23 is not that far behind. There are a couple of 24s, of course. People like Benjamin Pham and Greg Chin are currently sitting on 24 match points. So, we really have got two of the heavy hitters in this particular field at the moment. So, yeah, these players are really putting themselves in a position for top eight. And, and this is the best time to watch them play. I mean... If it was kind of the last round of top 32, we would still want to watch these players even if they were out of contention. But seeing them when they're among the top seeds, they're all they're currently in position to be in the top eight if they keep winning. So it's a crucial game for both of these players and we get to see them. It's going to be pretty good. Now, Torn is, of course, playing that deck we just saw Philip play. We saw in the interview that Kyle did with Philip. They're playing the same list. It is the exact same, I believe, 60-card list, down to the one Max Potion, two Gardevoir, one Gallade, etc. Michael, on the other hand, he is going to be playing Buzzwall Lycanroc, a deck which we did see coming in was going to be one of the heavy hitters. Yeah, and again, Pramwat felt like this is a good matchup for him. Uh, and in talking to a lot of the European players who are bringing this Gardevoir uh, Zoroark deck, a lot of them said it beats everything except for Buzzwole Lycanroc. That's the one deck they don't feel comfortable against. Uh, yesterday, Tord was able to take a victory against it on stream, but it was a very close match, and Tord felt like it was a close matchup. We'll see who's right about this matchup. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that when you watch the good players, and you know, one of them's like, I've got a really big advantage in this matchup. And the other one's, well, it's kind of like 50-50. <laughs> We do see that watch and learn Sudowoodoo in the prizes, but nothing terrible for Michael Pramawat there, which is all right. And towards prizes, what do we see? A Tapu Lele and a Mallow. Nothing terrible so far. One of his two Gardevoir and one of his Zoroark. Not terrible prizes. It's, they're not going to slow either player down. It's not like what we saw with Philip in the previous game. <laughs> no, not at all. That Sudowoodoo actually is fairly important against Gardevoir GX. Uh, it can use Watch and Learn to copy the uh, Infinite Force attack. If a Gardevoir GX gets too much energy on it, Suda Widow can actually use Infinite Force against it and uh, deal quite a bit of damage, but we'll see if it ends up mattering. We will indeed. Now, it looks like Tord has won the flip and gone first. And like Tord tends to do, he's got to turn one Bridget <laughs> without playing that Tapu Lele. What we're probably going to see here is just a whole mess of Zorua. One of the really interesting things that Philip said in his interview previously was, in the early turns, you play this like a Zoroark deck. When you've got your Zoroark out, when you've got those trades on board, you look for things like Mallow to go and get your Stage 2s, your Gardevoir, your Gallade, etc. But in the early game, it is a Zoroark deck. He may well go for a second Rolt there as well to give himself options as he goes forward. But I think minimum couple of Zoroark. And then he can get those trades going. And as soon as trades are up, it really does give you a huge advantage with these Zoroark decks. Yeah, Pramalot does start with the Regirock EX, which is not a great starter. He would have loved to start with one of those Buzzwool GX instead. So uh, not great for him right off the bat. You know, he can always find a float stone and a way to retreat and attack on his first turn. But uh, I do think that is one of the keys to the matchup. You need to attack with Buzzwool GX every single turn, especially on the first turn if you're going second. This is one of the few decks that is fine with going second because it can attack and do a relevant amount of damage on the first turn if it goes second. So Pramawat, you know, he's staring down a perfect start from Tord, gets the turn one Bridget, and uh, we'll see if Pramawat can respond with an attack on his first turn.
Now, the good news is that that jet punch from Boswell is likely to take a KO on turn one if he can get it active. If you see there that you've got, you know, two Zorua on the bench, there might even be a little bit of a temptation to try and get a Guzma on board and take out one of those Zorua's turn one to really limit Tor's options in terms of drawing cards. If you can't draw cards, it becomes so much more difficult to get those stage twos on the field. Now, we did see a lack of energy from Tord, which is slightly upsetting. And we do see that Michael does start off, and it looks like he's got a Buzzwell, and it looks like he's also got a Guzma in his hand to start off as he plays this Brooklet Hill. Yeah, I didn't see any energy in his hand, no, but... I didn't. Uh, still a good start, nonetheless. He'll be able to Brooklet Hill. I think he's going to look to see if he has any Octillery prized. He has one in hand, and I think a Professor Sycamore. So before going for Remorade here, he wants to see if he has at least one Octillery in his deck, which he does. So we'll probably see Remorade coming down uh, so he can get that Octillery up and running. This is one of the few top decks that is not playing Zorark GX, instead relying on Octillery's Abyssal Hand. So getting it into play is pretty important. Uh, and yeah, just getting Rockruff down and a Buzzwool probably wants to find an Energy this turn, a Floatstone, and then hit a Max Elixir. That would be his ideal first turn. Absolutely. If he could make it a strong energy with a float stone, then he would be doing 60 to get the KO on that route. And getting a turn one KO would be huge here. Even if it's not on a Zorua, it still leaves Tord with two Zorua and one route, limiting his options as he goes into his turn. And maybe there would be a temptation to play the Guzma, but like we said, it's completely irrelevant when there's no energy in his hand because it doesn't really do much for you. He really needs to find energy off here, though. And good news is he's got an energy. Bad news is he doesn't have a strong energy. Yeah, it doesn't have a float stone either. No. So although he can start getting energy on the board, not only is he not taking a KO this turn, he's actually not even doing an attack. So the energy on the rock rough, like we see in these Lycan Rock decks, got to be the correct play. Yeah, and you see he has another Rockruff in hand, and he is opting not to play it down. I think he knows Tord plays Parallel City, so he doesn't want to be forced to have to discard one of his Pokemon before he needs to. And uh, you really don't need to have multiple Rockruff down. Um, you can evolve one at a time for Bloodthirsty Eyes. So having the second one down here, not super important, but... Small plays like that do make a difference. Absolutely, they do. And Tord here might even be trying to look for a Guzma of his own, if possible. Because, you know, that Rockruff <laughs> now is becoming quite a big threat. As soon as he's got the energy on, it's threatening that dangerous Rogue GX. Uh, this is something you never want to see. Your opponent has a Ralts, turn two, plays an Ultra Ball, and discards a rare candy. <laughs> you know they have another one. You know a Gardevoir is coming. Oh, that is not what Michael wanted to see here. Yeah, that pretty much. And you can see that the there is a guard of one right in front of Tor's deck. But yeah, you never discard that rare candy unless you're going to have to play a Professor Sycamore, which we know isn't the case because there's an end being discarded as well, or unless your opponent's already got a rare candy and does not feel the pressure to keep it into their hand. But like we said, this is not a deck which is designed to get a turn two guard of war. It is not the main plan. But it doesn't mean you're not going to jump at the chance if you can. And, you know, this turn two Gardevoir here is going to be really big for Tord. Even just, oh, we will need a Fairy Energy here as he drops a Field Blower to get rid of a Choice Band and a Brooklet Hill. If he can find a Fairy Energy off of this end, he's going to be hitting 90 damage to that Regirock. And basically saying to Michael, hey, if you don't get this out the active, I'm taking a free two prizes off it next turn. Yeah, this is a perfect start for Tord so far. If he can just find a fairy energy, he'll be putting on some significant pressure with infinite force. And he's going to be mindful of his own bench size here. You can't bench too many Pokemon against Lycanroc GX, or else that dangerous Rogue GX attack can deal with it pretty easily. Three benched Pokemon, you're typically pretty safe. Uh, and Pramalot won't have any easy response to this turn two Gardevoir, assuming Tord... Finds a fairy energy, which he has not yet. But he does have an Evo Soda in hand to find himself a Zoroark GX. And I, I couldn't see what else was there. He might have an Ultra Ball or something as well. So he still can draw a few more cards. Of course, that Infinite Force does 30 damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. So you can do an extra 60 damage with double colorless energy. It's a great card for Gardevoir. But you've got to have at least one fairy energy on there. After that, you can whack whatever energy. I mean, you could be putting Fighting and Fire I don't know why you would, but you could be putting that onto Gardevoir to do more damage. But in the short term, 
you need to get at least one fairy energy on there. So this next trade is going to be really, really big. And there isn't another way to get a nope. Zoroark. Oh, there's the fairy energy. <laughs> the <laughs> trade is successful. Throws away a card to find uh, two cards he wanted. And there it is. The Secret Spring attaching that fairy energy to Gardevoir GX. It only does 90 damage, but this does set up a future knockout on this Regirock EX and poses a very threatening Gardevoir GX with three energy on it. Next turn, it could get up to six on it and pretty much knock out anything Primawatt has. And that's the big thing here. Firstly, there's a threatening Gardevoir, but secondly, one of the things we see with Zoroark is it's a phenomenal Pokemon that struggles to get one-hit KOs. Well, now that Regirock is in Zoroark range, it means that at some point in the game, whenever Tord feels like it, he can just play a Guzma and take an easy two prizes off that Regirock. And that's going to be quite difficult. And I'm looking at Michael's list here. I don't see any Ace Roller. I don't see any Max Potion. So that damage is staying on that Regirock until the end of the game. So even if it gets out of the active, like it is now with this Guzma, it means that it's there just to be KO'd in the future. Speaking of being KO'd, Tord was unable to evolve one of his Zorua, and it is going down to a Jet Punch right now. Yeah, Pramawat trying to limit the number of Zorark GX that Tord has in play. He could have chosen to knock out the Ralts here, but decides to go for the source of this deck's power, and that is trade. Uh, he's hoping that if he can keep as many Zorark GX off the board as possible, perhaps he can stick Tord later in the game with an N and disrupt him. Yeah, and that's absolutely a valid strategy and one that he's clearly choosing to go for here. Now, you do see Tord, he's gone and put the Zoroark into the active, you know, face to face with that Boswell. Might be going for a two hit KO, might be going for Guzma shenanigans, trying to use that Gardevoir to maybe pull up something from the bench and KO it. Maybe even something like that Rockruff, because at the moment, Tord really is limited to free bench Pokemon. Now, that Enhanced Hammer's nice, gets rid of that strong energy from the Boswell, meaning Michael, first of all, needs an energy to attack next turn, and secondly, he's that much further away away from a free energy Boswell because he plays energy switch. So there was a chance next turn for an energy switch and a free energy Boswell, but we do see that Guzma and he is going after the Rockruff. I love this play from Tord because as weird as it sounds, that little 60 HP Rockruff, that's a threat right now. Yeah, Lycanroc GX is the biggest threat to Gardevoir GX. Now Tord, uh, he did get the knockout there, but he did not get any energy attachments on that turn. No fairy energy, no double colorless. So we see Pramawat limiting the number of Zorark GX in play. Has had an immediate effect. Trade is good, but it's much better in multiples. Uh, if you could only use one Zorark GX ability every turn, it would be much worse. But oh my goodness. Three Max Elixir in a row. And <laughs> yeah, this is horrendous for Pramawat. He has no way to attack with his active Buzzwold GX. He has three Max Elixir, but no energy in his hand. And if he just Max Elixirs all onto a bench Boswell, that opens up a Guzma play, because, of course, Gardevoir really takes advantage of Pokemon that have a lot of energy attached. So, generally speaking, you'd be like, yay, free Max Elixir, I can get a free energy Boswell <laughs> on the bench for next turn. But I don't think that's really an option here, because if Tord were to drop a Guzma, that could be really devastating. Yeah, I think you at least play... Two of these max elixirs. Uh, you want to hit at least two energy. Put one onto the rock gruff. Probably one onto the benched buzzwool. Let's see what he gets off the first one. Looks like the first one does connect. But uh, yeah, three is questionable. <laughs> uh, if you put too much energy down, yeah, that Guzma in conjunction with Gardevoir GX can be pretty devastating. But again, with only one Zorark GX in play for Tord, he's not going to have the wealth of resources that he's used to. I did notice in the previous turn, Michael chose to do the 30 to the Zoroark rather than to the Ralts. He did potentially miss a KO. Now, don't get me wrong. I know he wants to take out that Zoroark. That has been signposted. But, of course, that Ralts, Tor's not playing any Curlier. And you've got to think Michael knows that this says that he isn't. So the chances after discarding two, double color, uh, two rare candy to actually evolve are quite slim. That could have been a nice cheeky bench KO with the Jet Punch there. But, of course, it comes down to that decision making. Yes, you can get that two hit KO on the bench with a Ralts, and it's quite likely you will with no Curlier and only two rare candy available. But then you're not doing any damage to the Zoroark, and KOing that Zoroark is how you get a late gain end and really run your opponent out of resources. 
well, all three Max Elixir connecting for Michael Pramwat. So even though he won't be able to attack this turn, uh, he did get three energy in play, and he doesn't have to use some fancy stage two ability like Tord does. <laughs> uh, he's just playing item cards. He is indeed, of course. Now it's only going to take two more energy or an energy plus a choice band in order for Gardevoir to get a KO on that Buzzwall. Now it's asking a lot, especially with only one trade on the board, but there is a potential here for Tord to take a KO on that Buzzwall and really run Tord out of energy. Having said that, He's not actually running toward out of energy because there's still an energy on the rock rough. And as we've been talking about all game, really all day, all weekend, that can be a huge swing point in the game. Yeah, right now, Tord does seem to have the advantage uh, that turn to Gardevoir GX and uh, Pramawat missing the attack on that turn. Everything seems to be going in Tord's favor right now. Uh, the only bad thing is, again, he only has one Zorark GX in play, so... He's not going to be able to trade two, three, four times in a turn and have access to plays like where you can Guzma, Floatstone, play all these energy. Uh, he is somewhat limited, and you can see that by he's playing Mallow as a supporter for the turn, and uh, he won't be able to get a knockout here. No, unfortunately not. Now, he is gone for the Mew and the double colorless energy. Oh. If he were able to fill his bench, he would be able to, you know, copy that Riotous Beating and get a, a KO, but I don't think... He's got enough bench Pokemon to actually pull that off at the moment. So in theory, this Mew could KO the active Buzzwall, but I don't think he's got the energy, he's got the Pokemon to do it. The good yeah, news is, Trade is going to draw those two cards he got <laughs> with a Mallow. Yeah, uh, and he'll only need one additional bench Pokemon in order to get this knockout. He just needs five total Pokemon in play to copy Ride as beating for the knockout. So looks like that is the play Tord is going for. It is a bit risky. Mew EX only has 120 HP. Oh, or he can just use a choice band. That also works. But <laughs> uh, Floatstone makes it so that he doesn't have to discard any energy. So this is excellent play from Tord. Uh, even with the limited resources from only being able to use trade once per turn, he is operating like a well-oiled machine over here. That was wonderful. I must confess, I didn't realize he had a choice band for the Mew there, so he only needed three bench Pokemon. And of course, he really wants three bench Pokemon. Four bench Pokemon means a Lycanroc GX with a choice band will get a one-hit KO with Dangerous Rogue on that Gardevoir. Tord clearly trying to avoid that, and that choice band was a difference between benching a fourth Pokemon and not benching a fourth Pokemon. The thing is, though, here, Tord, uh, you know, Michael can get a third energy on Boswell and KO the Mew, and that's all fine and dandy, but, I mean, Tord probably isn't terribly scared of a free energy Boswell when he's got a free energy Gardevoir, and it will take one more energy just to take a KO and go down to one prize remaining. Yeah, I think... Pramwat might be trying to go for uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes and bring out the Gardevoir GX and then use Absorption GX to just knock out the Gardevoir. Uh, then it'll be an easy knockout from the Mew EX, but he might be okay with that. Um, then he can end toward down to one later on. So it's kind of a long-term plan. It's a little risky, but I think Pramwat's far enough behind. He has to take some risks here. I think that's absolutely the case, and I think you're right. That Gardevoir has got to go down. That Gardevoir will just keep winning the oh. game, but he's actually going for a Zoroark here, so we might be seeing Jet Punch. Uh, yeah, I think actually he'll go for Knuckle Impact, or if he can get a knockout with Jet Punch, he'll do that. I see Premalot do this a lot. Um, a lot of these decks these days are heavily reliant on things like Zoroark GX Trade, Octillery's Abyssal Hand, or Inguru's Instruct. And when you can take out their draw power and play an N, a lot of these decks just kind of fall apart. So if Pramwa can eliminate all of the Zorark GX from play and then play an N like he's doing here, Tord could just stop drawing the resources he needs, uh, especially because all of these decks are now relying on having Zorark GX. They're all cutting down on supporter cards. There's only two Professor Sycamore in Tord's deck. So getting this knockout here could put Tord in a bad position. The good news is Pram did hit that 
uh, Strong Energy. The bad news is he didn't hit Choice Band. Strong Energy, Choice Band, Red Giroc does mean he'd be hitting 180 with Jet Punch. And then we talked about that 30 residual damage before. That actually does open up. You can hit 180 with a single energy on a Zoroark. So that 30 from Jet Punch actually brings it down to 180. The problem is he didn't hit the Choice Band. If he did, he'd actually be able to Jet Punch here for the KO. As it is, he's either got to use Knuckle Impact, meaning he can't KO or he can't attack next turn, or Absorption, which is his only GX attack for the game. Yeah. And there's no GX counter being flipped here, so it looks like that was a Knuckle Impact. Yeah, he knows Buzzball's going to get knocked out. There's <laughs> there's no drawback to using Knuckle Impact here. Uh, Premot fully accepts that Buzzball GX will get knocked out here. He's just playing for the longer game and saying, yeah, you'll get this knockout, you'll go down to one prize card, but then I'm going to play an N. Yeah, and that's going to be devastating. There's no Zoroark on the field. And, you know, Tord, I'm still looking at that extra route on the bench. I suggested in the first turn he may go for Freeze or Ruin. Now, that is really extending for the Zoroark. But there was a turn a couple of turns ago. He had another Zoroark GX in his hand. Oof. He could potentially have kept that. But this is all hindsight and all of that. It's, it's difficult to actually think what would have happened had he gone for that. That route really needs to evolve because as it is at the moment, it's not doing any good. And it could have been a Zorua. We do see a rare candy there, but we don't see a Gardevoir. The one good thing is he's actually got one of his two Professor Sycamore in his hand now. Yeah, and bad news for Premalot is Tor did draw the double colorless energy and also uh, the Professor Sycamore. So he now has five energy on this Gardevoir GX. And that Suda Widow is still in his prize cards. Imagine if he had it here. He could watch and learn and probably just knock out this Gardevoir GX straight away in combination with Strong Energy and Choice Band. The way it stands, there's just almost nothing he can do against this Gardevoir GX since there's only two benched Pokemon on Tord's side. Uh, both players understanding each other's deck very well and playing around uh, each other's outs, but right here it just looks like Tord has drawn a little better than Michael this game. Absolutely, and that's Sudo Wudu. Originally, you see in the prizes, you're like, ah, as long as he can, but he didn't get it. There was no getting it out of the prizes, and now it actually has come to the point where it could be huge. So as it stands at the moment, I think we see a Guzma coming down for that route so that we can maybe see a Jet Punch to KO the routes, go down to two prizes remaining, which he'd still need a strong energy to pull that off. But it doesn't actually... He's got a strong energy in hand if he hasn't played this energy this turn. Yeah, he can't afford to play another energy, though. He just loses if he attaches a second one to Buzzwall. He does, which means he's not getting a KO on the routes, which means he's kind of buying time, yeah. hoping that he can next turn Guzma and KO the Gardevoir. But if he does that, there's a Mui X on the field that might be able to... Oh, no, that's... Oh, it's yeah. such an so awkward decision. Fremont's trying to set it up so he can knock out the Gardevoir with his Lycanroc GX. And then Mew EX doesn't really do anything against Lycanroc GX, but this Tapu Lele is going to wrap it up. <laughs> we see the Guzma coming out for Tord, and uh, in our battle of the international champions, Tord Reklev will take game number one. A very well played by both players. I mean, this is a, an excellent game. I love seeing players of this caliber play because you really do see absolutely everything. You see players controlling their bench. You see Max Elixir being used, putting the energy on the right bench Pokemon. You see tactics and you see changing tactics. Both players changed up as they went through the game. I don't think Tord really was expecting to go really heavy Mew this game, but that's ending up what it was likely to be. We saw him setting up that Red Giroc EX for later in the game, and as it turned out, it was completely irrelevant. <laughs> that Red Giroc sat there with 90 damage on for the whole game, but it could have been useful in the future. We saw, you know, Pramawat using that Jet Punch doing 30 damage to the bench Pokemon, and at the time, he basically gave up a two-hit KO on a route. Now, as it turned out, he whiffed the energy the following turn, so it was a moot point. <laughs> but, you know, three, four, five turns later, he's sitting there, and had he drawn the strong energy, he then would have got a KO on Zoroark with Jet Punch. Now, as it turns out, he didn't draw the strong energy, which means he had to use Knuckle Impact, and it turned out that that 30 damage on the Zoroark turned out to be irrelevant. 
And since he had, didn't have the energy the following turn, the 30 damage on the routes would have been irrelevant. But you've just seen these players setting up plays saying, look, I may or may not pay this off in five or six turns, but I'm setting myself up so I've got the option. The Red Rock play never paid off. The 30 damage on the Zoroark never paid off. But they could have done under different circumstances. And that's what we're really seeing in this game. It's not just that they're taking the KOs now. They are spreading damage, energy, Pokemon evolution around the board to give themselves every possible option to win in the future and that's what I love about watching these players and the thing that stands out to me is that well, two things number one is that clearly Torrid can win this matchup uh, <laughs> if he draws well enough uh, it seems pretty clear Gardevoir GX is just so strong it can overcome anything uh, and that Mew EX is going to be very important but Michael really didn't draw very well in the first game. Uh, it wasn't a bad hand by any means, but he never got Octillery into play. Uh, he missed an energy and an attack on the first and, I think, third turns. Uh, so many things went wrong for him, but the game was still pretty close. So I'll be interested to see how this plays out in game number two. Maybe if Torrid doesn't have a perfect start or... Simply going first for Michael could be the difference. A single Red Jurok being prized can be a real pain. We do see quite often players go for a Jet Punch with a strong energy in a Red Jurok to get a KO on a 60 HP Rolts, for instance. But two Zoroark being prized for Tord, that could also be quite big. And it looks like Michael has chosen to go first here. He's got energy. He's got Brooklyn Hill. He's got Professor Sycamore. I think he's got a bit too much energy. I think he's going to have to Professor Sycamore a couple of those into the discard. But a Buzzwall with an energy and a Remoraid on the bench, I can think of much worse starts I've seen, like his last game. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn Hill has been an incredible stadium card for a lot of these fighting and water type decks, or even Volcanian decks, I guess. Uh, just being able to search out a basic Pokemon is excellent. And uh, in this Buzzwool, Octillery, Lycanroc deck, it gets pretty much every Pokemon you need outside of Tapu Lele GX, which isn't really very useful unless it's being played from your hand. No, getting it straight onto your bench is not ideal. You did notice Michael chose to discard the strong energy there rather than attaching it. Tord plays one copy of Enhanced Tamper, but he also plays his four Puzzle of Time. And that was Michael basically saying, I can't use it right now to do extra damage, and I am not willing to let it just get be discarded with Enhanced Hammer and run the risk of not being able to have it later on. So I like that play from him, and it's always risky attaching a special energy on turn one when you can't attack. And it's a little play, but it could make a difference, especially if he's able to get, say, a Knuckle Impact or an Absorption in future turns. Yeah, there's just no real reason to play strong energy there. Jet Punch already knocks out Zerua. Uh, the blowback from having your energy discarded by Enhanced Hammer is just so bad. Uh, the, the potential extra 20 damage is just hardly ever worth it, especially in this matchup. Oh, absolutely. Now, Tord does get his Bridget. He has had to play a Tapu Lele this game. A little bit sad, but, you know, these things happen. And now he's going to get a bigger bench. The question is, is he going to do what he did last game and really try and limit to free bench Pokemon? Or is he going to open himself up a little bit more? It looks like he is. Do remember, of course, that Tord is playing that copy of Parallel City. So I think there's an excellent chance that he's going to try and draw into that. We can see it's not prized. So I think there's a very good chance that in the not-too-distant future, he's going to play that Parallel City on himself, discard his lone Tapu Lele from the bench, and then he'll be back with free bench Pokemon, which is how he played the entirety of the previous game, and is the only way to make sure that you're not having a Gardevoir GX KO'd by a dangerous rogue. If we see Michael use a GX attack, I think it's fair to assume that Tor's going to go, yay, full bench, but not until that happens. Yeah, we also see a, perhaps a change in philosophy. Oh, wow. Tor just gets the Mew EX on the first turn, and that certainly seems like a change in philosophy. Um, in the first game, he went for multiple Ralts. In this game, he's like, well, last game, my opponent just kind of went after all my Zoroark, and that wasn't cool. <laughs> so uh, it seems like my opponent doesn't want to go after Ralts. I need to bench more Zerua if I want to get Zorark GX. And wow, just putting the double colas right onto the Mew EX. Tor just threatening, hey, next turn, this is coming for your Buzzwall. Uh, can you do anything about it? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he wants those multiple Zoroarks in play, multiple trade abilities, because it's it's something that just helps him set up in the middle of the game, in the late game. It helps him have those options. We saw him win in the previous game, but we also saw that when Michael ends him, he drew one of his two Professor Sycamore. And then when he played that Sycamore, he drew both a Guzma and a Professor Sycamore. I'm not going to be silly enough to sit here and say that Tord got lucky, but certainly his draws were quite good at the end of the game. He knows he cannot rely on that every single time. He needs to make sure he's got those Zoroarks to guarantee. And speaking of guarantee, Michael never got this Octillery last game, and he's going, right, none of that, please. Yeah, the question for me is, what will Premalot aim this jet punch at? Clearly, he's going to knock out the active Zerua, and oh, there we see the Suda Widow coming down. Uh, but will he aim this jet punch at the Mew EX to try to soften it up, or will he go after a Zerua like he did last game? Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards hitting the Mew, since if Mew uses Raidus beating to knock out Buzzwool, you can simply, well, you don't even need to hit the Mew here, but you can copy that with watch and learn you can use riotous beating and knock out this mew on the next turn that and would be uh, a good play that would be a very nice play i mean one of the things about mew is it has you know such low hp and it gives up two prizes the good news is he's going to probably be taking two prizes here there comes the zoroark to make sure that that riotous beating is on board now that there are five pokemon in total on towards side of the field it means he's doing a hundred which means it will be doubled to 200 and get the ko straight away and it doesn't matter if you're giving up two prizes on the Mew because you're taking two prizes with the Mew. Yeah, so we do see an N from Tord. Uh, it's going to put Tord at six cards and Michael at five. We already know how this turn's going to shape up for, for Tord. He's going to end this with the riotous beating, but will he get a second Zorark GX into play? Will he find Rare Candy and Gardevoir GX? Uh, this is a much simpler start for him this game, but still very effective. You see why this Mew EX has been included in this deck. It is just so potent against Buzzwall. And Buzzwall is a big threat. I mean, we were saying at the beginning of the stream today, or you were saying, I should say, Zoroark's really, really good. So naturally, what comes out of that is that Buzzwall comes around to counter it. So if you're playing this Zoroark deck, you know that you are, you know, really vulnerable to Buzzwall. So you've got to have an answer to Buzzwall built in. Yeah, it looks like Tord is going to use Brooklet Hill. He has zero fighting or water type Pokemon in his deck, but you can still use it to look through your deck as long as your bench is not full. And he's going to take this opportunity to check for some prize cards before he makes his next decision. Uh, it's always nice to have that at your disposal. It's always good to remember that you can use your opponent's stadium cards in these situations uh, just to get more information. Yeah, I love using things like Brooklyn Hill just to search my deck. I know I'm not playing any water or fighting Pokemon. My opponent knows I'm not playing any. But the deck is secret information. You are allowed to play a card even if you know and your opponent knows there's nothing in your deck that's a correct thing you know no, no valid target because the deck is secret although we did see the example on stream yesterday of the uh the ultra ball that you cannot play if you literally have no <laughs> cards in deck yeah. because then it's, it's it's a little bit too obvious yeah so strong turn from toward there he gets rare candy gardevoir uh gets the fairy energy and double colors so he powers up his gardevoir gx and also gets the knockout with that mu ex Ramon's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Uh, he might need to find Max Elixir soon to try to get some energy in play because he just can't keep up if he is only limited to one energy per turn. And unfortunately, watch and learn, if I'm remembering my rulings correctly, won't actually use Riotous Beating. It will. Oh, uh, it will use it? Yeah, Mew's ability allows it to oh, use an attack. Yes, of course, so of course. The attack was used, so uh, Sudo Widow can use Riotous Beating. It's a weird way around. Yeah. <laughs> Wood is copying Mew, copying Zorwax Rides and Speeding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost it for a second there. I guess you're absolutely correct. Yeah, so uh, it will get the knockout here, but there's already a Gardevoir GX with three energy on it. And if Tord limits his bench once again, there's really no easy response for Promowat. Uh, just Dangerous Rogue GX can't do enough damage if there's only three benched Pokemon. That Gardevoir is going to get out of control very quickly, and uh, without things like Enhanced Hammer in Michael's deck, there's no way to really slow down 
that incoming avalanche of energy for the infinite force. And we did see in the previous game, if that Gardevoir gets going with a whole bunch of energy on it, it's so difficult to take down. Now, the good news for Michael Pramort here is that Tord does have a bench of four, which does mean that Dangerous Rogue is an option. And the good news for Tord is he's got his Parallel City to play at some point if he wants to. And there isn't an energy on that Rockruff. Although, do remember that Michael does play energy switch here as Todd pops his bench and goes okay here's what's on my bench and now we can see and, and it's lovely again and the one thing that really stands out that Gardevoir free energy on the Gardevoir and that is just so damaging as we go later on through the game it's it really is something Michael is going to have to try and keep in check yeah, so we see the watch and learn using the riotous beating that was used last turn, <laughs> knocking out the Mew EX. Uh, I was actually wondering if Pramawat would have used uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes or Guzma to go after Zorark GX and uh, try to knock that out and take the trade away from Tord. But it looks like he's just feeling too threatened by the Mew EX. Figures he needs to get it off the board or else. Yeah, I, I see that. I mean, and it's still a Boswell on Michael's side of the field. So there were potential Guzma shenanigans coming in from Tord, maybe taking out that Boswell later on. So I like what Tord's doing here. I like his setup. We see an Evo Soda coming down to get a second Zoroark. He's really trying to avoid what happened in the previous game. And of course, now he's down to free bench Pokemon. And that is one of the huge interactions in this game. The size of Tord's bench is actually super important for the you know, to decide who wins this game because Bloodthirsty Eyes is still a, a potential thing there. We do see that Absorption GX is now out of range of a Gardevoir unless you see multiple strong energy and all of that shenanigans. So it really is important for Tor to protect that Gardevoir and he's doing that quite nicely. The only downside here is at the moment he's taking a single prize off that Sudo Wudu, which means that he'll be evening it up going into Michael's turn, which does put the impetus back on him. Maybe if he can hit some Max Elixirs and get some KOs on those Zorak on the bench, he could, you know, finish out this game just ignoring the Gardevoir. Yeah, the problem is there's just not easy enough knockouts for Premolat. Uh The Zerua evolving closed the door to victory for him. Uh, if he could have gotten a Jet Punch, knock out Zerua, put 30 onto the Zorark GX, and then perhaps knock it out with, you know, like a strong energy choice band kind of attack with the Regirock in play and another Jet Punch. That was a clear route to a two-turn victory. Now with two Zorark GX, it's becoming a little more difficult. And again, that Gardevoir GX can get more out of control here. If Tord has more energy... I think he's just going to pile it all on to that Gardevoir GX. Or maybe not. Maybe he's going for a Guzma. Ab there, that is absolutely something he could go for here. Of course, there's nothing to stop Michael, you know, trying to reuse that Sudowoodoo, assuming he is playing stuff like Rescue Stretcher to, you know, get them back. I mean, certainly... You know, we expect him to be saying some recovery cards here, and that means that potentially he could get that Sudowoodoo back at some point, and maybe he plays a Max Elixir. But then, of course, he's got to have the Rescue Stretcher, and then he's got to hit the Max Elixir. And it's not an easy card to reuse Sudowoodoo. It's a card you've really got to plan to use. And if you want to drop it on one specific turn out of the blue, especially when it's in the discard, you've got to have the exact right cards on the exact right turn. That is not something that's easy to pull off. Yeah, we do see the Mallow here from Tord, though. So no Guzma will be played this turn. Just going to put two cards to the top of his deck so he can draw them with trade. And it looks like he might be favoring attacking with Tapu Lele GX instead of Gardevoir. But nope, he's just going to attack with Infinite Force. And it's like he's just preparing his Tapu Lele GX for a later turn. I mean, as it stands at the moment, it's already doing 60. That's enough to KO a Rock Ruff unless they both evolve this turn. And... I would quite like that from Tord. It means he can take the Rockcroft, put the Tapu Lele in the active, and then the Gardevoir sitting on the bench with a whole bunch of energy on, ready to take that final KO on something like a Buzzwall. I think he's worried about putting too much energy on the Gardevoir just in case. And similarly, he does want a second attacker, but he doesn't want it to be that fighting weak Zoroark. So as long as he's got a Guzma next turn to KO a Rockruff with that Tapu Lele, I quite like this play because then, I mean, Michael's not going to be doing a huge amount of damage to this Gardevoir this turn. It looks like 70 as it stands. 
So that means that that Gardevoir is probably going to be safe for another turn or two. We could see a Guzma just to take out a Rockruff. And then he's got this Gardevoir with many energy on, which in theory should take the last KO on a Buzzwole, on a Regirock, on whatever, you know, to really finish out this game in the next two turns. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what Promowat's path to victory is in this situation. It's not easy. Uh, it just feels like if Tord gets a bunch of energy onto this Gardevoir GX, there's not a whole lot he can do. Oh, and he misses this Max Elixir. That was huge to get an energy onto the rock roof on the bench. Absolutely. So right now, I mean, N is his best plan of attack if Tord can't find the resources to knock out this Buzzwool GX. Maybe Pramawat can find a way to win, but it is just not looking good for him right now. Oh, it's going to be extremely difficult. I mean, the easiest route to victory here is KOing two Zoroark probably on the bench because they're going to go down to attacks from Lycanroc, etc. But the problem is, if Pram gets enough energy on a Lycanroc, it's probably going to get KO'd by a Gardevoir. And if he's Guzmaring up and KOing the Zoroark, then that Gardevoir's remaining unchecked. But as long as Tor's got free bench Pokemon, it's really difficult to get that KO. Doing the 70 damage to Gardevoir here is nice. It brings it down to 160, which now means it is in range with a Choice Band or a Strong Energy or even just a Regirock. So he will get a quite easy KO with Dangerous Rogue if he can get an energy on a Rock Ruff, which at the moment is something he hasn't been able to do. Maybe next turn he hits a Max Elixir, then evolves into Lycan Rock, and then he will actually get the KO on the Gardevoir. But there's a lot of ifs right now. Yeah, and this situation is why I figured Tord would just pile all of his energy onto Gardevoir GX. It would just be an instant knockout right here on the Buzzwell GX. As it stands, he's going to need uh, effectively three energy, which means two fairy energy and a choice band, or a fairy energy and a double colorless energy. And he's got four energy in play. That's half of the energy in his deck on the board already, so the odds of him drawing enough energy this turn aren't exactly high no. but that might change with this top of Lele GX getting the mallow oh that's going to spell disaster for Premawat yeah, that means he's definitely going to have... As long as the energy's in his deck, he's definitely going to have it this turn. Of course, we do see the Tapu Lele coming down here, and this is Tord's way of saying, yeah, okay, I get it, but you've got the KO with Dangerous Rogue anyway. You're doing 160. I've got 160 HP left. Now it's not a problem to have a fourth bench Pokemon, so down comes the Tapu Lele. It doesn't make any difference in the end. And the good news is here, he's still, even if this Gardevoir goes down and then... Pramot's going to need a bunch to do it. But even if this Gardevoir does go down, he's got this Tapu Lele that can attack. And unless both those Rock Ruff get evolved, there's a really quite easy KO on the bench. And even if they do, it only take a double colorless energy to KO an Octillery. Ugh, double puzzle of time coming in for Tord. This cannot be good for Michael Pramot. Uh, his Buzzwool GX will certainly go down this turn. And yeah, it's going to be on him to respond. He's going to need... Max Elixir and Energy and a Lycanroc GX just to knock out this Gardevoir GX in the following turn. And Tord can even disrupt this if he wants to go for things like a Field Blower, but he's actually just going to go for the Mew EX just to kind of spread out his energy and his attackers. It's going to make it even more difficult for Promwat to win this game. Yeah, this is such a good play from Tord here. Now he's getting the KO with the Mew. Michael's still got to take two KOs to win the game. So Tord here, he can either attack with the Gardevoir next turn or he can attack with the Tapu Lele. And he's probably only going to need a Guzma to win the game because let's not forget, there are still two 60 HP Rock Ruffs on Michael's side of the field. He really needs to evolve both of them because, okay, you don't expect to win a long, you know, epic free game series by KOing a rock rough with a tapu lele but that's something that's legitimately on the board for Tord now and Pramot's gonna have to figure out some way to get this lichen rock gx in play fully powered up it's gonna involve a max elixir he's already gone through a couple of them and there are a lot of fighting energy in his discard pile so the odds are not in his favor uh, the only thing potentially in his favor is that Tord completely played his hand out that turn he had no cards in hand at the end. So Pramwat might look at that and say, all right, he's got two random cards in my hand. Maybe I don't need to end here. 
Maybe I can afford to use Professor Sycamore and give myself the best odds of hitting this max elixir and potentially win the game. Yeah, it's so difficult in a situation like this. Do you disrupt your opponent? Do you go for the win? Of course, the disruption does nothing unless he's able to actually get this rolling. The problem is he really needs to hit the Max Elixir before he gets the Lycan Rock out because Max Elixir only accelerates energy to benched basic Pokemon. I suppose he could maybe Max Elixir onto a bench basic and then use an energy switch to move it over. I know he had one on the first turn of the game that he discarded with Professor Sycamore. I don't know if he's used his second one or not, but then you are getting into incredibly clunky territory, which is just decreasing your odds more and more that you're actually going to hit what you need in order to be able to pull off what is at this stage a pretty unlikely victory. Yeah, but he's still going to go for it. He's actually just going to burn the energy switch here and try to abyssal hand for more cards. So three cards does he find Max Elixir here. And he does. Oh, oh. wow. This is, this is getting interesting. If he hits this, he's already got the Lycan Rock. He could actually pull the Gardevoir up and KO it. And, I mean, it's still Guzma and Tord wins the game because Mew can KO the Boswell or Tapuleta can KO the Rock Club. Let's ignore oh, that for the moment. He, he hits the, the Max Elixir, and he's also got Blood First DI. So he's got his choice of what he KOs here with this dangerous Rogue GX. He's making uh, this interesting at the end. I think he's got to go for Zorok GX. Uh, you can't let Tord trade twice. It's just too likely he's going to get the Guzma. Like, he's, is he going to use Bloodthirsty Eyes at all? Didn't so, signal anything yet. There's so just, much on Tord's bench, though. That's what's really worrying me. There's so much. I think you're right. Guzma wins Tord the game next turn. That's, that's, just, that's just it. So I think you probably do need to go for the Zoroark and maybe try and reduce options. But he's playing more cards now, so he must not have used Bloodthirsty Eyes. He must just be going after the Mew here. And I think this Ultra Ball's got to be a Lycan Rock. So that way, at least, he evolves a Rockruff, takes out the Mew, and then Guzma doesn't necessarily win toward the game next turn. Yep. He's got to get the energy out to KO with Gardevoir. So this is an alternate way. I like this play from him. But then again, Guzma DCE, double colorless energy, still will KO the Octillery with that Tapu Lele. Tord's still got a lot of options to win this game, but at least Michael is taking away the Guzma and you win option. Assuming he got a Lycan Rock. Yeah, he's still figuring out which Pokemon he wants to take with the Ultra Ball. Uh, the thing that makes the most sense to me, yeah, is Bloodthirsty Eyes, bring out a Zorark GX and try to end Tord down to one card, knock out one of those Zorark, and force him to draw just off of one trade. It looks like, no, he's just going to knock out the Mew here and flip over the GX counter, and that is going to be the knockout. Does Tord find the game-winning cards here? He has multiple ways to win, but if he misses, Kramawat will win the game next turn, most likely. Yeah, double colorless energy and a fairy energy, or double colorless energy and a choice band, and God of War KO's Lycan Rock. Double colorless energy and a Guzma, and Tapu Lele KO's the Octillery, or just a double colorless energy and a Guzma, and a Zorowak KO's the Octillery. I think there is main routes to victory here. Of course, there's always some kind of weird get the Mew double colorless energy back and all of that, but for the time being, it seems to be it's either God of War KOing Lycan Rock, or just a Guzma plus a double colorless energy energy will be the main way. Now, he's got the double colorless energy and yep. a choice band, which will be enough. That will be seven, which is 210 on the Lycan Rock. And with five minutes remaining, Tord Reklev wins a second game to get the KO and win 2-0 against Michael Prammel on what was a very, very good series and a very, very exciting game. Yeah, our showdown of international champions Looks like Tord Reklev stands tall here with a 2-0 victory over Michael Pramilat. And uh, Tord is, is he on his way to three international championship victories in a row? I mean, they started off day two with two victories. He's headed towards another top eight. Can anyone stop him? I mean, the problem is he's sitting here with a really, really good record. I mean, this will put his record up to eight wins, one loss, and two draws. He just took down one of the very best players in the world, playing what should have been one of